creatures of our God and King. Lift up your voice and with us sing. Oh, praise Him. Alleluia. Thou burning sun and golden beam. Thou silver moon with softer gleam. Oh, praise Him. Oh, praise Him. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let all things that Creator bless and worship Him in humbleness. Oh, praise Him. Alleluia. Praise, praise the Father, praise the Son, and praise the Spirit, three in one. Oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him. Okay. Hey, guys, it's not Sunday, but feeling a little Holy Spirit this morning, and that was a request from Esther. Apparently, I missed it a while back. I don't know how, Esther, so there you go. It's a beautiful song. It's recorded by so many different worship groups, and everybody's got their own take on it. Well, that was Amy's take on it. Hey, guys, welcome to Bella's Bargains. My name is Amy, and I'm so glad you guys are here today. Guess what today is? Today is Totally Easy Tuesday, and we have so many fun things. All right, but I'm going to dive right into a couple things. Number one, if this is your first time, time on this channel. I open up every video with a song. We have lots of fun here and everything on this channel is from the Dollar Tree. So whatever I show you that I've created, all my supplies came from the Dollar Tree except for one thing. My glue gun. Okay. I didn't buy it at the Dollar Tree. I don't know if they've ever even sold one. Probably not. But anyway, everything else is Dollar Tree actually including the glue sticks for the glue gun. So I mean, there's that. Um, all right. So I have a couple of announcements before we dive into what I've created today. But if you do want to know about the uploads that I do every week, all you've got to do is click down below. I do four uploads every week and it's a couple of DIYs, some food reviews and shopping hauls, and they're all Dollar Tree. But we have so much going on. I just have to get busy on making some of these announcements. All right, so um, I have a, tr wait, God, I can't read my own notes, you guys. This is so pathetic. Look at this. Like, oh my gosh. All right. Um, the craft challenge. Let's talk. Let's start with the craft challenge. So what I did was I bought five items from the Dollar Tree and, and it's our challenge. So you guys, at the end of this video, I'm going to show a picture of what the supplies are and I'm going to give you the rules. Right now, I'm going to show you really quickly. So I tried to get things that I figured everybody could find in their Dollar Tree, starting with this. So, you know, they sell these boxes. Now, I realize some of you may not find this one exactly because there's ones that have different handles. So whatever you can find that will work for you. So we're going to start with a tray. Now, remember, our project that we're all doing together is going to be patriotic, right? So I thought, well, then we need some red, white, and blue. Now, I went for this sparkly stuff. Well, number one, it's just so fun. And also, I couldn't find red, white, and blue ribbon. So there was that. So I got the red, white, and blue sparkly. So now one, two, three, four. We only have one more item left. And that would be these, the chalkboard tags that are heart-shaped. What do you guys think? I didn't make it like super obvious. Like how would these things go together? I don't know. So, all right. Now I'm gonna put the rules. I'm gonna put a picture of these things up, put the rules at the bottom. But basically our rules are gonna be this. You, those five items and three other things. So that means you're probably gonna need a glue gun, so that's one thing. Yeah, your glue gun is gonna count as one of the things that you use to do the craft. So you're gonna use your glue gun and then two other things. So you could put in something, some other, from your own craft stash. If you need to use a marker, that's two things. I'm making this hard, guys, literally really hard. So you're only gonna be able to use three more things to create your craft with this. Can I be honest? I have no idea what I'm doing. Like literally no idea. And I did that on purpose. Like I'm not, we didn't even think about it. I just decided I was gonna buy these five things. Again, patriotic, so I got us some red, white, and blue elements. I knew everybody would have one of these. And just adding in sort of a farm thing and hearts, chuck, whatever. I just 
tried to find things that I thought you guys could find. So I'll put the official rules at the very end of this video with a picture of those supplies so that you guys can take a picture on your phone and go get all those things that you want. Okay, so that's craft challenge. Um, hey, uh, I'm talking about, sorry, I'm reading. I'm talking about doing, it's like, I'm, it's like you guys are right here. I'm just like, yeah, sip for a second. Let me figure this out. So I'm talking about doing other videos. So like Masterpiece Monday, which would be, I incorporate your guys' stuff and I, F Facebook thing, I'm still figuring that out. That is today. So anyway, um, so I was thinking about, what about a trash, Dollar Tree trash? Have you guys seen that where people take their empty packages and then they talk about them as they empty out their Dollar Tree trash? I don't know. What do you guys think? It's like, I don't know. Wash up Wednesdays. But then I also thought about like wish list Wednesdays and wish list Wednesdays would be the days when I do like your challenges or the items that you want me to move forward. You want to see them sooner rather than later. And so wish list Wednesday. Let me know what you think there. Okay. So, uh, the challenge that Don gave me with the 20 items, it's all sitting right here. It's going to be too long. So I'm actually, I'm so sorry. You're not seeing it today. I'm doing a bonus video for Wednesday. Otherwise this video was going to end up way too long because of what I did on the challenge. So bonus video tomorrow though, guys, for all you that want to see me five days a week, you get a bonus video tomorrow. Um, okay. And then Wanda, you asked what this was above my kitchen window. So I thought I'm just going to take it down and show you. Ugh. Ugh. Hopefully I get it back up there. Okay, so this is what's above my kitchen window that you guys only see the bottom part of. So this was a wedding gift when I married my late husband. Um, it's absolutely a beautiful piece of art, but you guys know I love art. So um, so that's it. And it's made, before anybody asks me, it's made by a place called Styx. And they were in Iowa. So super cool. I absolutely love this piece. Look at the bee. <laughs> Anyway, it's very country. I mean, farmhouse. I mean, what is it? I don't know. I'm not putting it back up right now, though. I'll leave it so you guys can see it like that, and I'll put it back up later. So there you go, Wanda. That's the piece that's above my kitchen window. Um, okay, so K-Mom suggested that I do a cat theme. So I was thinking maybe I would just do an animals in general theme. If you guys want that, let me know. And um, K-Mom wants to hear more about my cats. Why? They're little poop heads. So... The cat door, by the way, you guys, it's coming in Friday. The cat door gets installed. When that gets installed, I will pop some video in of them, like, first getting to it. So that's Friday. It probably wouldn't go until Saturday's video. Um, all right, Teresa, I am going to do your flip-flop sign on July 8th because that's when I'm doing more nautical. Um, and it, that's, that's where I was going with, like, the wish list. Like, so say I said something about that flip-flop sign and Teresa wanted to see it, then I could throw that onto a wish list Wednesday. If I do a wish list Wednesday videos, you guys, those are going to be shorter, I'm guessing. Although your wish list seemed to be getting longer and longer. Okay, so um, let's see. Rita wanted me to show how to make a craft pom-pom uh, like I showed you guys the other day. So Rita, that's at the end of this video. I did take a video of that and I will throw it at the end of this video. Boy, there's going to be a lot at the end of the video. Um, and then Danny also says, Danny said I should maybe do an around the world theme crafts themes from countries so also if that's something you guys would like to see let me know all right wanda went to hobby lobby and she messaged me she goes do you know they have all kinds of stuff on clearance for like your private wedding well i'd already gone so i thought i'd show you guys this look at this cute now i never show you anything that i don't buy at the dollar tree except for this one time i'm not even gonna tell you how much it was because it doesn't matter but i wanted to show you i'm gonna do what i'm gonna do with it is i'm gonna put our names and the date we got married on the back how cute is that isn't that the cute so yes, Wanda, I went to Hobby Lobby, and yes, I did buy that pirate ship. They don't sell those at Dollar Tree, let's be honest. Okay, let's see. Um, Sandy, you wanted to, the seashell wreath will also be on July 8th. Okay, um, was it Wanda? Somebody wanted to see how you remove labels from a bottle without destroying it. So I don't know where the other one is. I think I already put it in something to do a craft with because I wanted to use the Martinelli's label from the other day, a Foodie Friday. So I'm going to pause right now. And because I have to go boil some water so I can show you guys how to do this. So why do I, I don't even know why I tell you I pause. It's not like there's like this lapse in video. I'm just going to like, I'm going to be right back here holding the bottle again. <coughs> Oops. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. So what I did was I ran water through my coffee maker um, as opposed to getting a pot all dirty and sticking it in, you know, on top of the oven. And now I've poured that warm water into this bottle 
And what happens, or hot water, it's pretty boiling, I think. So what happens is it heats up the glass and then, and then loosens the adhesive that's on here. Now, this is a paper label, which is a little bit different than some labels have um, like a, like a plastic, like Mod Podge over them. <laughs> anyway, so I don't know how well this is gonna work, but we're gonna try, I'm gonna let it sit and just let that, no, nope, it didn't quite loosen yet. All right, we're gonna let it sit for a minute. It may be a complete fail, what do I know? Could be, worse things have happened. Okay, so let's move on, where are we to next? Um, uh, hey Selma, Selma messaged me because she lives in Florida, and but not anywhere near Disney, so I'm going to Disney World, right? Um, but I was thinking, you know what, you guys, this would be really fun. Let's just hope this channel gets so big that we can do an Amy, a Bella's Bargains cruise, and we'll all go and do a craft cruise. Wouldn't that like, be the most fun in the entire world? Ah, uh, okay, we can dream. We can totally dream, right? So, um, I think that's it. Do I have everything? Yeah, yeah, I think we're good. All right, let's get into the craft, shall we? Yes! Let's check our bottle. It's so hot, though. The bottle's really hot. So I'm hoping this is gonna work. Otherwise, I, it's just a complete fail. So I had to clean off all the bottles for my wedding invitation. It's not working yet. I'll let it sit a little bit longer. And that's how I did it. So I poured boiling water into the, maybe I need to use boiling water and not just the water out of the thing. That could be it too. I don't know, anyway. Um, and I poured boiling water into the bottles, let them sit, and then the labels came off. And it was a lot easier than trying to soak bottles in water to get the labels off. So this is really about if you want to use the bottle or the glass for DIYing or decorative purposes. Now I wanted to get the label off that other one all in one piece because I wanted to Mod Podge it. So, um, but it might not, ah, oh, that's hot. It might not work on this, but this speeds up your process of getting labels off if you're using, because you, if you want the glass to be, um, if you're trying to clean the glass off for a DIY. So there's that not quite loosening that glue up yet not quite we're just gonna let it sit a little bit longer all right so this week I did some it's totally easy Tuesday let's not forget that which means the crafts are totally easy not me the crafts people okay. so last week I showed you or maybe it was Saturday I was like I was gonna join these two together I did it look how cute so I just took the swirly swirl thing down the bottom and I incorporated it by being the little dot, like it's like the bee flying. I actually really think this is cute now. I found a purpose for my great big bee. Should have put it on bee day. I didn't. Um, I made him on bee day, didn't I? Anyway, just be you. But enjoy the little things. I think this is a super cute, whimsical piece now. It's going on my wall. Mm -hmm. Going back on my wall. All right, I don't even know where to start. I think I'm going to start with these because they're so dang cute. I hauled these not that long ago. Um... Gosh, maybe three weeks ago I hauled these and I told you guys what I was going to do with them and then that's what I did with them. So these are the vases that are the ladies' faces and I said I'm going to make a blonde, a brunette, and a redhead. <laughs> these are so cute! Okay, so look. So I gave her a choker with a button and a headband. Look at that. And she looks like she's got her hair kind of like mine right now. Huh. Hmm. Making image of myself. This one, I gave her little dangly earrings and a necklace. She's the brunette, obviously. And here's our redhead with her pearl necklace. Anybody says anything? And those cute, you guys. They came out so cute, and they're so reminiscent of the old head vases, which were collector's items. I don't know. I don't know. Years back. Okay. So they came out really cute. Very happy with those. And so easy and just a cute little thing. Now... Wouldn't this be cute if you were going to have a lunch party with some of your girlfriends or just have five or six women over for brunch or something, and you just take these, personalize them for them, right? Do little florals in them that match their hair color and just, I don't know, it'd be so fun. Like if you were going to do one for me, you could have little blonde wispies and put a headband on it, you know. Oh, do you notice I put the headband on the blonde? That's funny. Okay, anyway. All right, guys, so super cute, super easy, and how fun. Then again, those are just these cute little projects that they're, they're little things that they're selling at the Dollar Tree just to enhance them, and they're just adorable. By the way, Sharon, you were asking for bathroom decor pieces. 
Like this would be a really cute one in the bathroom. Here's what I'm gonna tell you. Another really cute idea would be buy like four of these, okay, or three. Decorate one in a color scheme that matches your bathroom. So it, uh, Sharon, isn't yours black and red? So you could do, um, uh, red, well, you could do like the red like this. This tends to be a little more orange on the pearls, but anyway, you know what I'm saying. And then put a couple of more of these in there and accent by throwing in toothbrushes or combs or or whatever. I mean, just there's all kinds of bathroom things that could be thrown in those. Okay, so just an idea. Super cute. I love those. All right, let's move on. Where am I going to go to next? Um, this. Okay, so the geodes, which I couldn't remember what they called in the video. But the geodes were, they they had four of them. One of them I put directly, I put directly, I just put it on in my shelves on my wall. And it looks really good, the green one. And then I had three left. And I said I was going to do something with them. So look. So this, it, this stands. It's the three geodes. This is super light, by the way. Like super light. Because these are just super light. So, but by adding the sparklies, it's like, oh my gosh. But the best part is, you'll see when I do the video, I have two mess ups on this thing. First of all, I spilled the glue all over. And then I go to outline with the gold pen. And it's one of those shake and push shake and push let's do a workout video and push shake and push anyway and the the ink goes flowing down i don't remember which one it is now was it the black or the blue i think it was the blue one and then i smear it well that sometimes your mistakes make the best things and I ended up doing it all over it putting that gold so i love these i hope you guys are getting the shimmer especially in the black one look at in the video the black one looks so plain um, because there's no eye in the middle of it, basically. So I love these. They came out so great. It's a nice, nice piece that isn't super heavy. It's super decorative, and it's nice and tall. I mean, it's probably um, maybe 30 inches tall. I should have measured that. Sorry, I did not. All right, where to next? Let's see, who was it? Um, Joanne, I hauled those three black baskets, and I said, these were a shape I'd never seen before. And I said I was gonna make tra trays out of them. So in the video, I'm gonna make them hanging baskets and I show you what I'm gonna use to make them shelves, not trays, shelves, I don't. After I made them hanging baskets, I was like, that's so cute, I'm not, I'm not changing it. So Joanne, I didn't do it, but that's part of crafting. Sometimes what I think I'm gonna do, and then it was like, oh, yeah, no. So it went off in a completely different direction and making them hanging baskets, but I love them, like love. So I just took the three baskets. These are the plant hanging chains that they sell there. Oh, look, I'm recycling the limes. They're out of that basket I did last week. This is a recycle of a sign. It was the center of another sign that I saved onto it. I love this. It's perfect addition to this. And this is absolutely adorable. Oh, shoot, I dropped. Sorry, guys. It happens. So, because um, I need to close this clasp here. So what I was gonna say was, the other thing that you could totally do is if you're putting this, I have limes all over the floor now, thank God they're not real, is that you could add some burlap ribbon to the top of it and whatnot. Also, you could shrink the distance between your baskets. I went for a more elongated look, but you could certainly shrink that. And you'll see, I put a picture of it, I hung it here just so you guys could get a better idea. So I didn't make the shelves. I'm super sorry, Adrian, but I really liked them hanging and so I left them as that. So, yeah, what do you do about that? I don't know, but that's the way it went. Okay, so I had had this idea a long time ago when I finally did it. And um, they sell those little lights at, why do I always say at the Dollar Tree? They sell those little lights, you know, that's the only place I go, you guys know that. And um, I was thinking, like, I really wanted to make a hanging lamp out of them, so I did. So I'm gonna show you the elements on this, though, I think are really cool. This is what I'm using to hang it with, came off of one of the floating shelves and I had removed it from the floating shelf. This is a plunger dowel. I covered the ends of it so that, um, first of all, nothing would slide off it, but also it covers the, the whatever on that. And look at this, it's so cute. This is super cute, a super fun project. Now I had two of the black baskets, one of the white. And that's just because what I it was what I had in store and I didn't want to go like in store, I mean, in my stock, you know? So I had messed up, I thought I had three black. So I ended up using the white, but you guys, I think it's totally fine. 
Um, but you could obviously do it with all white or you could do it with all black of the baskets. Or you could, um, yeah. Or you don't even have to put the baskets on it because those little things would be super cute just hanging off a dowel like that. So there's lots of ways that you can use those. So it's just a really cute little design. Perfect for, I think, for like a teenager's room or a corner in your house where nobody ever sits, but in the end, off chance that they do, there's some light available. Okay, next. I hauled, hmm, gosh, I'm gonna say maybe three or four months ago, but I'm still seeing them at Dollar Tree, so you can still catch these somewhere. And they are the wood, they had triangle and square boxes that had succulents in them. So this looks like a, this looks like an atomic, what is it, a nuclear sign? <laughs> Which I didn't intend. But I'm putting in the audio, cause I, I put in, I when I make the, the video, I put in all of the footage of me crafting. So in case anything goes wrong, I can tell you here. So I look at him like looking at him and I was like, oh my, oh my gosh, but that's okay. Hey, whatever. There's a couple of things that I could have done differently about this. First of all, I can make it not look like an atomic one just by changing the color on this, but I actually like it just the way it is. So I'm gonna leave it. I think it's a very boho looking thing. I love the succulents in there. I say in the video that I could paint this black back there, which would take it to the next level. But remember, today is what? Totally easy Tuesday. So it's those things that you can do with very little effort and still get a nice um, craft decor piece. So I love this. But then the three square, I had three squares. I did this and I love this more. <laughs> so, so easy. You'll notice I took out the little ones. I put in larger, more colorful cactus on there and hung it on a string three together. And the other thing I want you guys to understand, these were really rough when you bought them. I say this in the video. And by sanding them, it made them look, you know, like they were that aged, kind of what you want them to look like. Because sometimes you'll buy stuff at the Dollar Tree and it's pretty rough, but you have to clean it up even though it's rough to finish the rough. Gosh, does that even, mm. Well, anyway, that's what you have to do. All right. Is that all my projects? That's all my projects. I'm so sorry, you guys. I am not showing you the challenge because you're going to be shocked tomorrow. I think. I think. Maybe not. We should check our bottle one more time. Shall we check this bottle? Let's see where we are on the peel off the label status. If I can get a corner of it here. Eh. I'm going to go do boiling. Hold on. Okay. So I did. I put boiling water in there. And now you can see you've got to be, you have to be a little patient when you guys are doing this because um, it'll, ah, so hot. Shoot, it's so hot. Um, you just have to go slow and steady. Slow and steady wins the race. And just like, if it starts to pull away. Anyway, can you guys see? Getting out there, You're, there's always gonna be like little residuals and you just sponge, scrubby sponge and a scrubby sponge and um, Damn, that's so hot. And some soap. So this one's pulling away a little bit. Here, hold on. Like I said, it just take you do have to be a little patient because you're gonna get it started. And once you get it going pretty good, then it's gonna pull off, maybe. It's so hot. Well, it's not working super, it's so hot. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna grab my scraper thing just to give me a little help. Okay, so this is, I got the, I did get the Martinelli's off, but I'm gonna show you guys something. I mean, I used the scraper and I'll, I'll be able to get the label off the other one enough to be able to do what I want to do with it. So there's that. But I wanted to show you this because there are just different types of, of labels and so you have to try it to get them off. So this is, oh my gosh. Wait, do you guys like my shirt? It says Bella's Bargains. My daughter got me this one for Christmas. Anyway, so this is a Captain Morgan bottle and I did fill it with boiling water and I just got the corner started because I want to show you guys that look at this. Look at that come off, all right? So it's because it's a different kind of label. The Martinelli's was just a, peep. this is paper. So much harder to get off. Um, and so it just depends on the label. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off because I actually have a craft that I wanna do with a Martin uh, Martinelli's, with a Captain Morgan label. 
So, but do you guys see? It's the bottle is so hot. Because what happens is by putting the boiling water in there, ah, so hot, I can't touch it. Um, I've, the, all the glue has heated up. Oh, it's burning my fingertips. Anyway, the glue is heated up and so now it's releasing the label without tearing the label. The bot, I mean the bottle, I'm still gonna use like Gooby Gone to clean it up. I've cleaned so many of these up for the wedding. And there you go, see that? Now I'm gonna use this, I gotta stick it down. <laughs> I'm gonna use that label to make something. How about we come back up here? Hi, how are you guys? Did you miss me? All right, so there, I don't remember, was it Wanda the desk to see that? So you guys, when you're looking at bottles, because bottles are so great in DIYs, and to clean the stuff off is always a pain. So I've honestly found that throwing the the boiling water in there, look, I had super hot. And now if I get my Gooby Gone, this is gonna come off, or I don't even need Gooby Gone. I literally use um, a sponge with some soap on it and it cleans it off. Captain Morgan bottles are really cool because they have, wait, where is it? Is it on these? Maybe it's not on these. It's not on the, well, they have skull and crossbones to see, see them on them. But on the smaller ones, they have a pirate ship, which is what I'm using for my um, wedding invitations. Okay, that's enough about that. If you ask me again, I'm getting married November 13th. All right, so there you guys, you guys go. Hey, I wanted to point out one other thing. One of the great things about this little craft is if you have an outage, they're battery operated lights. So you can, you know, yeah, you got lights still. Let's get on to those crafts. You guys want to see them? Thanks so much. Don't forget, at the end of this video, Rita, pom-poms. And for our subscription, for our challenge, the, the picture there and all the rules. And what I'm going to tell you is I'm going to give us, I was thinking like two weeks to buy the stuff and make a craft. So I'll put that on the thing um, that the date that you have to send your picture to me at Facebook. It wouldn't be two weeks before, two, two weeks to get me the picture, if that makes sense, of what you created. Okay, guys, enjoy the video. Um, and I will see you back here tomorrow for bonus video on the $20 new crafter challenge. Okay, enjoy. So for this video, I have these three um, little decor vase things that I just picked up um, uh, a couple weeks ago. And I'm gonna put some florals in it and I'm gonna make them a blonde, a brunette, and a redhead. So they'll have florals in there. And then I'm gonna take some pearls and I'm gonna give them a little pearl necklace. And that's pretty much it. Um, but I also might add a little little earrings on them so we'll see i'm gonna get them together and then look at them we'll just see how that goes all right so i forgot my pool noodles <laughs> i have to go get pool noodles to stick in these so i just cut little slivers of the pool noodles off and poked those down in there and again that's just to stick the picks into the floral picks i'm chopping them down to the size that i think is correct Playing with them a little bit and filling that in. Obviously, this is the blonde. 
And, um, you know, one of them I was trying to figure out, like, could I make the hair a little bit longer, a little bit difficult to do. So I just went with, you know, shorter, shorter do's. But then on the front, uh, I liked the shape of these looked almost like bangs. And so after I get all the picks in, I look at it and decide, well, I think I can throw some glue down there and get some bangs. So that's what I did. I kind of like the way that came out. And then just floof those flowers a little more in there to have them look however way you want to look. And you can use any florals on this. Um, it was just fun. It was fun to do. It was fun to put this together and see them come out. So then I moved on to the lunette. So again, cutting those picks down to size, putting them in. The one thing on this one, I didn't cut the picks all the same size. I did cut one of them a little bit longer so it would sort of pop up in the middle like a beehive or a bun on top of the head. That's visually what I was thinking. So just cut them. You know, I know I need wire cutters because I just do the old-fashioned cut with scissors and twist it. Um, some habits are hard to to kill. <laughs> I'm so used to doing that. And her hair came out so cute. I really like the brunette's hair. When I got to the redhead, I was thinking I didn't have enough with just those three roses, so I grabbed something else. In the end, the three roses were a perfect fill. Um, it's just because they have wider uh, width on them because the roses are bloomed. And it ended up looking so good. I think this one looks like Veronica Lake because there, there's this little... Oh, and I did put glue around the rim just to hold those roses down and together because there was only three of them. Do you see this face when she comes up? She looks like Veronica Lake because there's this one petal that sort of swoops down over her forehead. And then I just grabbed my colorful pearls and those matched the color of the florals. And so I gave her a necklace. And the elastic that I'm using there to string the pearls on comes in one of the bead things that I've purchased at the Dollar Tree for a dollar, people, a dollar. So just strung those, knotted it off, nothing too fancy, and then just put it around the neck. And the redhead then is complete. And I thought it, she came out so cute, my little Veronica Lake. And now let's move on to the brunette, who I call Ginger. And Ginger, I decided, needed a little more glam, kind of like Ginger from Gilligan's Island. So it got out the floral wires, which I just purchased these. So super convenient because it's gold, so it looks like she's got gold jewelry on. And all I did was use that stick there to twist around the ends, so it gave it a loop to loo and then it wouldn't come off. Now I'm trying to make like a hook for the earring just to put it over the lip of the vase and not glue it directly to the outside of the vase. I was worried that it wouldn't glue and stay, um, and so I just decided to make it more like a hanging earring off the side of the vase. It looks absolutely adorable, so it's fine. And I'm making sure that I'm getting them both to the same size. And just measuring, cutting, measuring, cutting, measuring, cutting. And I just looped these over the top and had them hang down. Then I went to the necklace, and so I just did three pieces. I twisted in the back. But see how I loop it there? That was, I'm twisting it so that the pearls won't slide. So by just doing that little loop-de-loo there in the, in the wire, they didn't slide. I kept them in the middle where I wanted them. And now she's got a cute little necklace on. And I'm finishing, I guess, the one earring. I thought I was done with the earrings. I guess not. <laughs> And getting another. Oh, I was looking for a piece. I'm trying to figure out what I was doing there. I was looking for another piece of wire, and I got lost somehow. But this wire is pretty thin, so couldn't find it. So I just cut another one, put it on there, and just trying to make sure that those are the same size. I did plop a pop. I did a dot of glue, and then pressed down one of the petals of the floral over it. It was to hold those earrings in place where I wanted them on the side, and then Ginger is like. Done. I can't call it ginger. I can't call her ginger because a ginger is a redhead. I don't know. Anyway, but I did. It was Veronica, ginger, and I don't know what this one is. <laughs> Daisy. <laughs> oh, so when I get to the blonde, I wanted to make it just be a little bit different. Oh, I threw a bit of hot glue back there just to keep the necklace in the same spot. 
So I wasn't quite sure what to do because I didn't want to like do the same thing. So in the end, I was like, I'm going to do a headband. So I went and got, this is from a ruler that I used, the wood rulers from the Dollar Tree, and I used the rulers to make a really beautiful sign, and I kept the plastic part that rips off. Well, because I'm always keeping everything. And I was like, it's the perfect base for a headband. One side has the numbers on it, and the other side is black. And so I got some buttons. I went with the purple. I just think I thought it complemented the yellow, kind of an opposite, and then just embellished the headband with some more um, buttons. But, you know, you could do this exact same thing with some material or whatever. I was just trying to make them all be a little bit different, have their own sort of character and style. And then on her, I take one button and use that elastic string again. I did put glue on the back there just to keep the headband in place. And I grabbed the elastic string again and put a button on it to make a choker. But when I do that, at first I tried to use, I'm just finishing decorating the headband there. I tried to use two buttons. I thought I would put like three on a choker and that didn't really work. So I end up just doing one you'll see here in a minute. And I didn't take the buttons all the way around on the headband. I just took them down far enough so that, you know, you could you were seeing them from the front. And then just placing where that should go. So here I go. I put two buttons on. Then I remove one. And I just go with the single big purple button. And it was super cute, like a choker. So that was it. But these can be done so many ways, you guys. They're just too cute. So, so very cute. I had fun with this project, and um, I... It came out pretty much exactly how I imagined it would come out, which is always a bonus. So for this one, I have these three decor pieces, and I don't even know what you call them. What do you call them? That, yeah, those things. Anyway, um, I'm gonna put them all together. They're kind of cool, and they come on their own stand. But I'm gonna actually put them together and make them one large piece. And I think I'll put the purple on the bottom. Then I'm gonna put the black, and then I'm gonna put the blue, and it'll be a large piece. I feel like the black, I could put something in there. I just don't know what it is. But if I think of it, I will put it in there. This is super easy. And again, I'm making a more substantial piece for $3 out of these things. And there's so many ideas, by the way, you guys. Actually, I think I'm going to do it. I think I will add some glitter onto these. So then they look like, what are those things called? The rock things that sparkle in the middle. What are they called? Uh, yep, yeah, okay, well, anyway, those things. So... Let's see how this turns out. All right, so I took these two geode little decor pieces, and they're super lightweight. They're just made out of the um, pressed whatever it is. I got my scraper thing, and I was just trying to pry the back of it off without doing damage to the front. So in the end, it didn't really want to come off. I ended up breaking off the stand. It broke the pressed board sort of rectangular pieces holding it on and left some but that worked out perfect because it came became the holder for me to join it to the next one so I did the same thing on the second one again leaving part of that and it just it worked perfectly so then I decided that these needed to look a little more real so I go to put glue on it won't spray so I take the top off and I decide just to pour it on and BAM but no worries, don't ever stress at these situations, just make the most of it. So I quickly ran the glue all over all over my three pieces, went and got a paper towel, and you know, mopped it up, and then just kept crafting. So of course I did purple sprinkles on the purple one. And then I also had some gold there. So I got silver, purple, and blue sprink um sparkles, sprinkles. And so there's silver that I put in the black and then blue on the blue. And then I also had gold because they were trimmed in that gold. And you see so many gold sparklies in a geode. So I went and did that too. And then I wanted to take my gold pen and I should have outlined them before I glued them together, but I didn't. 
So I just glued them together. You can see that this is so easy. The hot glue is enough because these are so lightweight. And it worked out perfect leaving that little portion on there. So I just hot glued them together and then realized, oops, I should have outlined them before I glued them together, but that's okay. We could still go and do that. So I grabbed my sparkle pen and um, I have to shake it because it's one of those shake, shake, shake pens and then press it. So it's my like liquid liner or something pen. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> but then look at that. It spills. And I was like, wait, that's perfect. I like the way it looked. So I outlined the entire thing and then went back in and just randomly started putting gold all over there and it ends up looking like veins almost on these geodes and it looks spectacular and all because of a mistake because sometimes your mistakes are the best thing that happens to get you see something that you wouldn't have thought before but when it, the gold spilled onto there I was like oh I like the way that looks and so then I just start doing that and you can see there was really no rhyme or reason for it I was just adding in the gold, mostly on the outlining different parts of it. And then I just took my finger and, and rubbed it in so that it wasn't uh, just a straight line. There was added, it just, this added so much dimension, you guys, so much dimension. And remember how the middle of the black one was so empty and now look at it. It doesn't look like it now, does it? Just by adding those sparkles and the, gold pen and everything it just brought these up to such a nice level and now they are really a nice looking decor piece see I just went with that on the black geo there and it just looks so much better so these were really fun I think they came out great remember this is totally easy Tuesday so these are extremely easy projects and this one is incredibly easy hope you like So for this one, I have three of these baskets. This one isn't exactly the same. I thought it was. Oh, well, it won't matter. It's fine. Um, we're going to do it even though this one's different because you'll get the idea. And if you want to make it, you can make it. So I have three, uh, three baskets. They're all black. You could do them all black. You could do them all white. I was using what I had. Then I have three of these, which they are the little hanging lights that... You turn on like this, okay? And they're just a little light up light. This is a dowel from a plunger and some nautical rope. And I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do this entire project just using these one, two, three, four items. And what I'm doing is just making a cute little hanging. Um, oh, I forgot one thing. And that would be the hanging string from the floating shelves. So I've taken apart quite a few floating shelves and they have this hanger on them and I'm using this to hang my dowel. I forgot that, I'm sorry. Okay, so, but still rope. And this, I'm reusing something. All right, so let's go. I think I'm gonna put them just like this with, it'll go, or maybe I'll go like this and do them at different levels. I might do them at different heights on the dowel. And we're just making a little portable um, lamp thingy, my bobber. I'm not sure what you would call it. A thingy, my bobber. <laughs> All right, let's see how this turns out. Okay, so this one takes a little bit longer, so I sped this up just a little bit more, but that's okay. I can walk you right through it. All I'm doing is taking the tags off of everything. Now, see that part of the dowel? I measured in so that I would get the rope coverage the same on both sides, and this was just so I could cover up the part that screws into the plunger part of this plunger. So it's plunger dowel. And I did not use anything but hot glue to adhere it because it's not going to get tugged on or anything. It's just decorative on the ends there. The other advantage by putting the rope on either ends was that it was going to help keep anything from sliding off. So um, just do exactly the same thing on the other side. This dowel looks so cool now. <laughs> and then 
And then I took the string, which was off one of the floating shelves, and I just tied it together here so that it's hanging on there. And I can do some adjusting with it side to side, but you don't have to. You could just put it on there and tie it and dab some hot glue on there and you'd be fine. So then I took my things and I took two sticks to sort of visually find my middle, took the hanging thing off of those little battery operated lanterns, got it through there, took a little finagling, I got better as we went along, and then just hung the light back on it once I was through there and that was it. It was that was ready to go. And go on to the next one. Again, I take my two sticks. That's a super quick, easy way to find your middle, FYI. It's not exact, but it does work. So just finding the middle, and then I knew where to put that in, and then hook the lights back on. Then what all I did was take string. Now I want you to notice I took a thing of nautical string and I deconstructed it. So now I have the thinner piece, and I did the old horseshoe loop through. So I just loop it through and then pull the tails back through. No knot, no anything. Did that on all three of them. I'm not sure. That's not the correct name, the horseshoe loop through. It's not the correct name. And then after I got those all done, I just tied them on. I had to hang it up and fiddle with it a little bit to get them at the exact level that I wanted. But I did do, you know, short, middle, long, so that the baskets weren't hit, hitting each other. And it came out great. And... Yeah, fun piece, really fun, very boho. Hope you guys like All right, for this one, I have the three wire baskets that I just hauled a couple weeks ago. And they're a shape that I hadn't seen there before because they're like sort of a, a square that goes in a little bit. Anyway, and then I have some of the plant hangers. And first, I'm going to make a hanging basket trio thing. And then I'm going to take that apart because it's super easy. And then I'm going to make a um, shelf, standing shelf things with these. So we're going to see it work two different ways. And on the second time, I mean, I'm assuming if this all works, on the second time... I think I'm gonna use three of these wood boxes and four arrows, I believe. I think that's what I'm gonna do. So let's get to the first one and see how that comes out first. <laughs> all right, so this is so easy. Just removed all the tags and I went and got my plant hanger wire, hanger wire and um, removed one so that it was just two off of it because I was just gonna attach, you know, a wire or a chain on either side. So I did that. And then really just the rest of this was, you know, measuring and, and I had to open up some of the um, links on the chain. But for the most part, I used the hooks that were already on them. So you'll see like right here, I just hook it. And then um, I have to I add a basket in the center. So that took that was the hardest part actually <laughs> and it wasn't even that difficult because it is totally easy Tuesday so I'm just getting my hooks on there and they take a little bit but eventually I got them hooked on there and then went hooked on the bottom basket and then hooked in the center one and the reason I did that was so that I could measure properly with the the chains making sure that 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 hung even that the first and the third basket hung even. And then if they did, then I knew that I could just count and find the center. So I make a mistake here. I count with my I count like the the links in and I find the center. But that's stupid because I don't actually want the top of the basket to be in the center. So first I attach it and then I realize, yeah, that's not really the way to do it. Um and so I move it up so that I get more even spacage between the first and the second and the second and the third basket. So don't do what I did. Um, you could probably do it visually or you can count from the bottom to the next one and the top to the next one and make sure that the amount of links in between are the same. So once I got those on, I had to take some pliers and open up some of the 
rings to attach that middle one. So I just took one off and then used it as like a an attachment. I hope that makes I think that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> so I used one little link to make an attachment in this and for that center basket. Then this farmer's sign I just used my scraper there for distancing so I'd get the same distance and I just took a screwdriver and just poked it through so I got it through. Then I only used two strands of the nautical and just wanted them going through. I thought it looked more farmhouse but I also could have used one link from the chain and then I attached it to the top of the top basket. came out really cute. I did outline it with the black because that really did make that pop and it looked so much better once I outlined it. Okay, so the, I've picked these up just recently. They were there. You can still find them some Dollar Trees. Um, and they're very boho. They're just this wood triangles and squares that have cactus in the middle of them. So it didn't matter where I saw them. They all seem to be kind of tattered. Why am I taking tags off? I don't know. So they were all kind of tattered. But I'm going to make a boho kind of piece with them. And so I'm going to put these all together for a wall hanging. I'm actually gonna put this in the center of it because I think it looks kind of cool. And then I'm gonna make a wall hanging out of these three and I'll use rope to join them all together. But I am gonna take my sander and just sort of rough the edges up a little bit. I'm gonna give in to how rough they look. I'm gonna give in and just go like, yep, they look rough. So, hey, that's what it is. Um, Cause they, they just are kind of, they are kind of beat up along around everywhere um, I'm not going to change the greenery that's in them but you certainly could give it um, a bigger cactus in it um, it'd be super easy to change these out actually maybe I will on these three I might change these three out with I'm going to I'm going to go get some colored cactus they're dollar picks from the dollar tree change these out to make this just it's going to be a, a better looking piece and I might add these in here. Let's see. I might add these into the center one here. Nope, they don't fit. I'm just going to save these for some other thing. I'll use them somewhere. But yeah, I'm going to put bigger pieces in here. I love this. They have like a nail in there. So I'm just going to be able to hot glue that back in. And I'll save these for something else. I almost feel like I should switch out. No, they're already different enough. Let's see. Do I want to switch them out? <laughs> it's... See, I'm going to change it, like, right here in front of you guys. Um, like, I don't know, because this is a different kind, so I feel like that might actually look a little bit better if I can get these out. Let's see. Oh, yeah, they come out just the same. Look at this. I'm just going to stick that back in there on that same. No, oh, the nail bent. Well, that's not good. Come on, people. Don't fight with me, you little cactus. Don't fight with Mama. Just let me put you back on there. Okay, there we go. So I think I will switch out the white ones. I'm going to leave this one that way. But these three white ones, I think I'm going to switch them out for these because it's a different, it's, yeah, that's like actually looks way better. And then I'm going to put brighter cactus on this one. Off camera, I'm going to sand all these. So I'm not going to, you guys don't need to watch me do this on all of them. But basically, I'm just going to like just give in to the roughness a little bit, rough them up just a little bit more. Um, just to clean it up too because this does it cleans up the roughness a little bit and makes it look more I don't know mm, I'm not making much sense but I think you guys know what I'm talking about so I'm going to do that off camera I'm probably also going to do it to the white ones just to clean them up a little bit and there we go part of me I'm not going to lie I'm not going to do it but a suggestion would be to paint the inside of these black which I think would look really good I'm not actually gonna do that. I'm gonna leave them the way they are. But you could do that to take it up one more notch. All right, so I'm gonna switch out my cactus here. I'm gonna sand everything up and then we're gonna come back and finish these up. So after I sanded them all down, I started putting them together. I used the Dollar Tree wood glue, the Dollar Tree one, the Crafter Square one right there, and some hot glue just to um, 
give an instant hold. And I just went around and completed my circle with every other one. It was pretty simple. Then I found, I always remove the little hangers when I take apart a canvas and I hold on to them. And so I took one and hammered it into this so that I could hang it up afterwards. But you don't have to because it does stand all on its own. I wanted it to hang. I gave up on hammering with the other thing and decided to actually use a hammer. So <laughs> I got it on there with the hammer. Then just went back to gluing. So some of the wood glue, hot glue in between just to give it a really quick set. And then, um, and then kept going. But I think at some point, yeah, I glued the wrong side because I had already put the hanger on, so that's what messed it up. So I take it off, I go to re-glue, and then basically do the same thing again. See, I'm over on my iPad over here, just FYI. I don't know what I'm answering somebody or something. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so I go back to glue it again, and I basically do the same thing again. Don't ask me how I should pay attention. See, and then it won't, there's too much glue on there. So I have to scrape it off because otherwise when you have to re-glue something, it is best to take off the glue because otherwise you end up too big of a gap because the hard glue just becomes a gap barrier um, and you can't get super close that way. See, and I go scraping it off of this one because it's just too thick. And then I get it right and get that one on there and put the last triangle into our circle and this is where, once I got all done and I put it together, I laid it down and I added the triangle in the center. What I didn't do was I didn't figure out what top was before I did that. Had I figured that out, I probably would have put the middle triangle on at a different angle. But I didn't, and okay, it just happens. Learn from my mistakes. So, but it looks like a nuke icon. Um, <laughs> and I add this one in the middle. Which again, I didn't check where the hanger was. Had I, I would have known that, you know, I should be turning that a different way. In the end, it's fine. I think it's a super cute project, so I'm happy with it. And it could just go on a table, by the way. It doesn't even have to hang. You could set it on the table just like that. Super easy, you guys, because it is still Easy Tuesday. Um, super easy. Hope you like. then we moved on to this one and I was going to take these three squares put them in a hanger but you have to be really careful about spacing on these so I went and got some of the wood tower blocks and used those as a spacer and then left them there while I started to glue my ribbon on you'll notice I went all the way to the side so that my guide could be the frame of this and then I believe I go get my square I do just to make sure that these are okay and even lining up together and I'm off camera adding the third one on there. Sorry about that. Then I just go around, turn it over, and switch it to the other side. And doing the exact same thing. Just sticking to that outside frame because I knew that that was, that was a, I mean, it was a good guide. It was an already determined, predetermined guide on there. And left that, notice I left the tumbling blocks in there. And that was to make sure that my spacing, spacing stayed correct. And then there you go. Now I've got good spacing and I just cut my little ribbons down the bottom. I thought I was going to knot them, but that didn't work. And then I just tied this together and put a bow on it. And then just add our cactus in. So originally it just had those pretty small green cactus in it. And so cacti. And so I grabbed three of the larger ones and added those to it. Now, if you think about cost of this one, it's not super cost effective because each one of those boxes was a dollar. Now, each one of these cactus is a dollar. So you, you have six dollars into the whole thing. I guess that's not that bad. Oh, that one came apart, so I just glued it back. But you could have just left the succulents that were on there. But also, I, I now have those as part of my stash. So I feel like I just sort of did, did a trade out, right? Um these succulents for the other ones. Anyway, it's super cute, super easy. You know, I love these totally easy Tuesday ones because they're so cute. Did add a dab of glue and um, not all of them, I don't think, but some of them. 
and it just so boho, so very, very boho. Let me know what you guys think. Which project was your favorite? Would love to know. Thank you so much, as always, for watching. Have a great day, great week, great life from your singing crafty crafter. Happy hunting at your local Dollar Tree. So for a crepe paper pom-pom, all you got to do is start cutting strips. So I put my three colors together so the order stays the same. And I start cutting like seven to eight inch strips. It just depends. But you notice I just use my pile as my guide for how long. And then once I have those done, I fold them in half and find the middle. And then just take my scissors and make like a little tiny notch on each side. And that's so that the string, when I tie it all together, has a place to go into. Now the tricky part on these is this, because you just start pulling them out and twist. Can you see how I'm doing that little twisted at the end? And crepe paper can rip, so you just have to be a little careful, but by twisting it that, it gives it the fullness. So it just twists it out and you end up with your all your different pieces, you know, fluffing out. Um, and sometimes I would go to the same size once or twice so that the same color wouldn't end up on the same side. And then I'd flip over to do the other side of it. That's what I just did there. So now I'm going to flip over. Now the greatest thing about this is the string that you use to tie it to is what you can use to tie it to anything now. And these things last. i got to say, you could actually store them and bring them out again the following year. Um, and they're so inexpensive to make because you can get quite a few out of those three rolls. And also, I made this one really full. You don't have to make them quite this full. You could have to do far less strips on it. So just do some playing around and try them out and see what you like. And that's it. Create paper pom-poms. All right, your rules. Buy these five things. The three rolls of the diamond wrap in the red, white, and blue, one of the wood boxes, and the chalkboard hearts. Buy these five items, and you are only allowed to use three things to complete, like a glue gun is considered one, or twine, or another art uh, craft piece, whatever you'd like. And then have it completed and send me the picture by Tuesday, July 12th to my Facebook page via Messenger. There's no winners, just fun here, you guys. <laughs>